We're going to talk about first what it means to be completely simplified or the criteria that your solutions need to be and your answers need to be when I ask you to simplify something. Okay, and this is just part one, the basics. And the basics pertain primarily to things that are linear. Later when we study exponential functions, we'll learn about how to write an exponential expression that's all simplified. And when we do quadratics, we'll talk about these things called polynomials. And we'll talk about simplified radical form. So, but to start, we're gonna start with things we need for linear expressions and equations and the way their answers need to be formatted. So when I say criteria for completely simplified, I mean how your answers need to look when you're done and box it off happy face. All right, now I'm not gonna talk about the properties to achieve completely simplified answers. That's gonna be in another video. This is just what you have to achieve. And these are the things that are uh, posted on my wall and I gave you a handout. So the first rule, is to not leave any parentheses. So your expression is not simplified if there's still parentheses in it. So for example, if I see the quantity x plus two plus two, this is not considered simplified. And so I can't leave my answer like this. And there's a property I'm gonna use called the associative property that allows me to change my parentheses and I can add two plus two and get four. So another example of something that is not simplified and an answer you don't want to see that we're going to talk about is something outside the parentheses, 3 times the quantity x plus 4. And you can't leave this either. And this is another property. or an, uh, We're going to use another property to simplify this one called the distributive property, which we'll talk about later. And then even later in the year, when we don't have linear, when we're in quadratic in particular, I'll take off that 3 and put an exponent on there. And then once again, you can't leave the parentheses and there's a different way to deal with that. All right, so the second thing we need to talk about is the evaluation of multiplication. It must occur, so you have to evaluate your multiplication. So I don't want to see an expression like this because I can multiply two times three and I can get six, right? So this is um, a frowny face kind of answer. I don't want to leave that. And if I look at three, times x times x squared, this is another example of something that I don't want to leave because x times x squared can be simplified to x cubed. If I think about the definition of exponents, I can you know, expand x squared out and I get x times x times x, which can be re rewritten as x cubed. So then powers with numeric bases have to be evaluated. So what I mean by this one is I don't want to see like two to the third power x because I know what two to the third power is, I can actually figure out that multiplication. Uh, so this is also frowny face. But if I see two x cubed, this is fine because I don't know what x is, so I can't cube it. So I'm just gonna leave it two x cubed, All right? So the fourth rule is that coefficients come first. And I know when you guys were writing apparent formulas and equations, you know, I didn't care where you put the multiplication, I just cared if your rule would work. Uh, but now we're getting more sophisticated, so I have to make sure that your rules fit a format. So if I want to multiply x times 3, I don't write it like that. The coefficient has to come first, so I would write it 3x, not x times 3. Okay, next one, and this is a big one, and this is one of the ones that we're going to spend quite a bit of time on, and that means, uh, and this one is combining like terms. That means things that can be added are added together. Okay, and that's essentially what combine like terms mean. So if I have x plus 2 plus 3, this is a big frowny face because I know what 2 plus 3 is. I can make it look simpler, so I'm going to add those two and by combining the like terms of 2 and 3. And I'll define what like terms are later. Basically what this says is anything that can be added is added and combined into a single term. So another case in point is 2x plus x. Well, I have two x's and another x. This is not the simplified form. The simplified form of this would be 3x, so this is also frowny face. But when I describe things that are like terms, you're going to see that 3x squared plus 2x is indeed simplified because I can't combine squares and not squares. All right, now I've got two more left to go. Okay, so rule six is arrange terms in decreasing degree. The degree that is the highest degree is the most important one, so we like to see it first. I don't want to have to look for the most important term in an expression. So if I have 3x plus x squared, that is a big 
frowny face because I don't want the x squared at the end. It's more important. So for example, if I put a y equals in front of it, um, this would be a quadratic equation and I want the thing that makes it quadratic in the front, not in the back. And so with something that's linear, 3 plus x is frowny face because the x is more important than the 3, so I want the x in the beginning. And um, so when you start writing equations now for uh, tables and for graphs, I'm going to expect to see the variable terms come before the constant terms. If this were, you know, an arithmetic sequence in the first six weeks, then I'm okay with 3 plus x, you know, but we're not in the first six weeks anymore. So you have to write these correctly. So you have to arrange them in decreasing, decreasing degree. So highest degree first, lowest degree in the back. And the last one, and this is the one that's easiest to deal with, and this is just uh, simplify signs. So if I have, for example, negative 3 x minus negative 4, and that's my expression, I don't like the minus negative, so frowny face. And I'm going to do what you, what you learn how to do when you learn how to deal with integers. I'm going to combine the minus and negative and make it a plus using the definition of subtraction. Uh, nor do I like to see something like this. I don't want to see plus and negative anymore. I want to see just the subtraction. And many of you already do this, which is great. So we just have to get in the habit of always doing this. And so when I in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some basic definitions that we're going to use to help us simplify algebraic expressions. And these definitions are going to be used as justification for our steps. Because you just don't do a step you have to uh, prove to me that you can actually do that step, and that's called a justification. So in the very basic beginnings, we start with definitions, the definitions that kind of uh, make everything work. And the first one is the definition of subtraction. And we learn this when you study, you know, adding and subtracting negative numbers. And you learn the definition of subtraction is adding the opposite. And so we're going to use this to justify uh, simplifying signs or unsimplifying signs. All right, so for example, if I take 3x minus negative 4, and remember the rule says of criteria for simplified expressions, you can't leave minus negative. You can combine that and simplify the signs to a plus. The justification for that, the mathematical reason we can do that, is the definition of subtraction is adding the opposite. And so my justification to everybody to prove to them that I can do this is the definition of subtraction. Now we're going to use this property both directions. So you're also going to use it in such a way that if I have 4 minus 3x, that is not simplified. I don't want the 3x in the back. It needs to be in the beginning. But I just can't rearrange subtraction because subtraction doesn't work that way. So what I have to do instead is change it to 4 plus negative 3x, and then I can totally rearrange things. And doing that or unsimplifying the sign is also the definition of subtraction. The next one we're going to use less often is the definition of division. And so that's when I have like x divided by 3 written like this, or x divided by 3 written like that, and I change it to x times 1 third. So whenever I change division, either with the vinculum or with the obelisk, into a multiplication by the reciprocal, then I totally have the definition of division being used. So this is an example of the definition of division. The next property, and we're going to use this one a lot more often, is the definition of exponents or the definition of powers. You can use either word. They're interchangeable there. And you use this property whenever you write something as an exponent. So x times x times x times x is um, not the fun way to write that, or efficient way, I should say. And I would write that as, instead, x to the fourth power. And this here, rewriting this way or that way, either direction, is a definition of exponents. Because sometimes you want to combine them into the exponent, and sometimes you want to expand them into the definition. And whenever you do that, you're using the definition of exponents. Now, the last definition we're going to look at is substitution. Now, substitution means to just replace something with something that's equal to it. And we're going to use this as a justification for arithmetic. So this is going to be the justification for basic arithmetic, like adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing numbers. And this is not variables. We have other properties for dealing with variables. So if I have x plus 2 plus 3, this thing is not simplified because remember, 
You have to combine like terms, which means if you can add something together, you better add it together. So x plus 2 plus 3 can be rewritten because 2 plus 3 can be substituted with what it's equivalent to, which is 5. And this is the happy face simplified answer. And the justification, the reasoning is because I'm going to use a substitution. Okay, I'm going to substitute 2 plus 3 with 5. Um, it also works with, of course, multiplication. If I have like 8 times 4x and I want to replace the 8 times 4 with what I know it's arith uh, arithmetically e equivalent to, meaning um, just equal to, I can say 32x. And changing it from that to that is substitution. So the basic divisions we're, or definitions we're going to use are definition of subtraction to simplify or unsimplify signs as needed. Definition of division to change division into a multiplication problem because dividing is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And then we're going to do the definition of exponents. When either I want to expand out an exponent into its def, uh, defined multiplication problem or vice versa and I want to change the multiplication into re being written as an exponent. And the last property is substitution and we're going to use that as our justification for basic arithmetic. No variables. Like I'm not adding 2x and 3x, I'm adding 2 and 3 to get a 5. I'm multiplying 8 and 4 to get a 32. Those are examples of substitution because I'm replacing with something that I know is equal. So those are our basic definitions.